Welcome to the news hour. It is another historic night on Capitol Hill. After three days and hundreds of votes cast, the House has still not elected a speaker. There is no sign that Kevin McCarthy has broken his GOP opposition, leaving the Republican Party divided and Congress paralyzed. Lisa Desjardins has the latest on where things stand. Outside the usual speaker's office, a watch and wait as a line of journalists and pressure both grow around Republican Kevin McCarthy and his allies. Where do things stand right now, Congressman? What do you think? We'll see. We're still talking. Today, one new thing next to McCarthy as he walked out was opponent Paul Gosar. Everybody builds trust. Oh, watch out, watch out. A flurry of closed door meetings with holdouts showed promise last night, but then today, Key opponent Scott Perry tweeted that confidences were betrayed by a leak, and it's now even more difficult to trust McCarthy. The On the Republican House floor, conference, I advance the name of Kevin McCarthy very proudly as the next Speaker of the House. I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House. Almost no change. McCarthy gained no votes, though his allies pitched a plea for unity. The American people have told us by putting a Republican majority here that they want Republicans to lead and they want a government that works and doesn't embarrass them. And we are failing on both missions. That must change today. There was something different. Florida's Matt Gates added a new name for speaker. Donald John Trump. The former president received just that one vote. But that was more than McCarthy gained, as a small, fervent Republican rebellion gave no ground. I will never vote for Kevin McCarthy. I am a no on Kevin. The stalemate is rare, but not unprecedented. In the lead up to the Civil War, the House twice had so much trouble choosing a speaker, it lowered the threshold to a mere plurality, not a majority. The most recent speaker stalemate was in 1923 when it took nine ballots. Our situation is most analogous to 1923 when you really just have two parties and it's a, a dispute within one party. Georgetown University's Matthew Glassman, a congressional rules expert, bristles at the suggestion that a yet to be formed Congress represents a constitutional crisis. And if they need to work through it for days or weeks, that may not be the greatest policy outcomes, but it's certainly reasonable for us as a republic. The way out of this is a, is a political way. Maybe it's McCarthy, maybe it's someone else. I would not expect McCarthy to get through early next week and still have all 203 of his votes voting for him multiple times a day. Meanwhile, House Democrats have shown a united front in the midst of the Republican division, but they raise a concern about what this all means. We cannot organize our district offices, get our new members doing that critical work of our constituent services, helping serve the people who sent us here on their behalf. The House divided still has not managed to stand behind one speaker. And right now, the 10th ballot for speaker again shows Kevin McCarthy coming up short and no speaker elected. Jeff, that means, of course, that now this Congress has surpassed that Congress from 1923, now with 10 votes mm. versus their nine, in how long it is taking to try and elect a speaker. Well, Lisa, Kevin McCarthy's allies hope that these negotiations yield some meaningful results, some progress with his detractors, but that's not reflected on the House floor, at least not yet. Bring us up to speed on what's happening. I just jogged up the stairs from the closed door meeting happening to try and figure this all out. Think of it this way. This is a tale of two sessions. First, session number one, what's going on behind closed doors. And I can report at this moment, that's actually seeming to look better and better for Kevin McCarthy. I spoke to one of his closest allies coming up the stairs. He said he's as optimistic as he ever been. They are putting pen to paper to lay out a series of rules changes that they think will bring on board maybe six, maybe even a dozen of the holdouts. And some of those holdouts are meeting with them and indicate, yes, they want to get there. So that's the situation behind closed doors. The other session, however, is the session that we're watching on the House floor. And the basic math tells you that they need far more than those holdouts that they think they can get with this potential deal tonight. And it's not clear that they can get them. I think, in mm. fact, there are more Never Kevins than there were before. 
Congress is terrible at math, and I think we still don't quite see the end game here. But one other thing I want to raise, there are some outside factors at play here as well. Uh, groups like, for example, the Club for Growth, which is a conservative fiscal group, they made a deal last night with a co conservative PAC associated with Kevin McCarthy. I can show you uh, their press release that came out about this. This is something that is highly unusual. But they wrote, we have a key agreement in support of Kevin McCarthy. They helped get elected some of the members of this House, the more conservative members. That deal is that that McCarthy-aligned super PAC would stay out of some House Republican races. Basically, that would help the more conservative groups. Um, and one other thing I'm hearing from some of these conservative McCarthy allies, Jeff, that's interesting, they say they are getting calls from their constituents that tell them that they uh, don't want Kevin McCarthy. They're getting hmm. pressure the other way from their grassroots. That's interesting. As this stalemate persists, as we heard Catherine Clark, uh, Clark say in your report, the work of the Congress is on hold, at least in the lower chamber. Members can't be sworn in. They can't do the work of the American people. What options are left for, for the House moving forward right now? There are very few. One is this idea that somehow Kevin McCarthy flips enough votes. The other is the idea that maybe he makes a deal with Democrats and gives them some better committee assignments. That's not going to work for the Republican base. Another idea, switch to plurality. You know, some of our viewers pointed out I got that wrong last night. It has been done in the past, but that isn't politically very feasible. So really, it's either flip those votes, get Kevin McCarthy elected, or he's got to drop out. And he probably needs to make that happen in the next couple of days, one or the other. All right, Lisa Desjardins covering it all for us. Lisa, thank you. You're welcome.